All right, Battle Chapter 30, uh, Six. It says this: Sennacherib invades Judah. 36 it says in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, which is of course northern Iraq today, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent um, the Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem with a great army, and he stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And there came out to him Elikam, the son of Hilkah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And the Rapshka said to them, Say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest the tr uh, this trust of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? In whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me. Behold, you are trusting in Egypt, that broken reed of the staff, which will pierce the hand of any man who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who, who trust in him. But if you say to me, We trust in the Lord our God is, of course, Christ, is it not he whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, You shall worship, uh, it says, You shall worship before this altar, Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you two thousand horses if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a signal or a single captain among the least of my master's servants when you trust in Egypt for chariots and, and, of, and for horsemen? Moreover, is it without the Lord that I have come up that I have come up against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Elikim, Shebna, and Joah said to Rashka, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic. Of course, Aramaic is like, old, it's like, it's like an older form of Hebrew. Of course, Christ, of course, uh, spoke Aramaic. So it's an older form of, form of Hebrew. So it says, um, it says, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the, in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rashka said, has my master sent me to speak these words to your to your master and to you, and not to the men sitting on the wall, who are doomed with you to eat their own dung and drink their own urine? Then the Rapshka stood stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah. Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to to uh, deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given to the hand of the king of Assyria. Do, do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the, the king of Assyria, um, make, make your peace with me and come out to me. Then each one of you will eat of his own vine, and each one of his own fig tree, and each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, beware, lest Hezekiah misled you by saying the Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods, or demons actually, the nations, delivered his, his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where, where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Seraphim? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their lands out of my hand? that the Lord shall deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But they were silent and answered him not a word. For the king's command was, Do not answer him. Then Elkim the son of Hilkah, who was over the household, and Shemna the secretary, and Joe the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn, and told him the words of the Rapshka. So, that's 36 about Syria invades Judah. Um, the king of Assyria pretty much invades Judah and threatens Judah to um, basically follow him or follow God and um, and of course uh, Hezekiah's men um, comes to King Hezekiah who's ever, who's ever Judah um, for help they don't know what to do so they're coming to Hezekiah and asking him for help because the king of Assyria has invaded Judah and now they and now the Hezekiah's uh, men don't know what to do so they're going to Hezekiah and the king of Assyria is telling Judah, look, you know, he's saying either, you know, you serve God or, or you serve him. 
Of course, we know that you serve God, you don't serve man. But um, and that that's that's the um, the uh, threat he's giving them. Either you know he's saying either you serve you know God or you serve or you serve you know um, Seriously. But that's uh, chapter 36 about Seriously and Bays of Judah. I have a little map here. It says um, Assyria attacks Judah and Jerusalem in 701 B.C. During the reign of Hezekiah of Judah, Seriously of Assyria came and attacked cities along the western edge of Judah. And he sent officials to besiege Jerusalem and convince Hezekiah to surrender. The Cushite king or Ethiopian king, uh, Terhaka, advanced from Egypt to support Hezekiah, but apparently failed. The siege of, the siege of Jerusalem was broken when the angel of the Lord, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty much a god himself, Christ, killed 185,000 Assyrians in a single night. Uh, Sirachim withdrew and returned to Nineveh in Assyria, where his own sons killed him. So, since Hezekiah chose to follow God, and God rewarded him by killing off the Assyrians. And then God sent the king of Assyria back to his own home for him to die, pretty much. And so that's, why, that's why it's so important to serve God, because you never know. You, you never know. I mean, when you serve God, you know, when you serve God and repent of your sins and live for him, he's going, he's going to take you. He's going to love you, like the loving father does. Um, you know, he's gonna bless you. So, so you know, you need to support and repent of your sins, live your life for God. And like I said, if you do that and live your life for Him and repent of your sins and, and, and just love God, and He will love you, He will protect you, He will bless you, He will watch over you like a loving Father does. But if you don't do that, then He's gonna allow evil to come upon you, so that you can repent of what you're doing and turn back to Him. So, so you know, what sin is, you know, serve when it comes down to it. When you have a choice to serve man or serve God, you always serve God because God's over man. Man is man is nothing because we're all going to die. We're all going we're all going to have an answer to God. Serve God. God's over everything. Man is going to die away. God 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 is eternal. I mean, it's a no-brainer actually. It's common sense. So anyway, um, they have a map here. You have the Syrian district, which is you know Samaria, Ashdod. You have Sirachib attacks from the north, um, and the Sirachib's officers attack Jerusalem, and then Turica advances, and the sea is besieged by the Assyrians. So this is the uh, the map of it right here. I can show you. Hold, hold it up. You can see that, but that's the map. See, if you see that long brown line, that's the that's where Sirachib invaded uh, Judah. Came all came all the way through Samaria, then to Judah, then over to Ashdod. So. Anyway, that's, that's uh, chapter um, 36 about Sarah Chubb and Judah. I'm up to 37 here shortly.